give a round and one more mom. Thank you, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Yay, that's exciting. We thought, uh, Lindsay came across that video, thought that would be very fitting for some of the moms in here who are some warriors. Um, we're actually wrapping up our MOVE series. Um, has it been fruitful for anybody? Has anybody enjoyed that? Has it been good? Uh, we've been going through, uh, this is our fourth week of this. We started off from moving from uh, surplus to, I have to look at my notes, surplus to what? Oh no, struggle to surplus. That didn't sound right at first. Yeah, struggle to surplus. And then we did loss to life. A couple weeks ago, we did from fear to faith. And then this week, oh, we are going to include moms in the teaching uh, today. That's why I brought my children's mom up here to help me with this today. We are going to be talking about from warrior to warrior. And we have had some moms that have had to be some warriors this year. Um, anybody who has children that have been in school that could not go to school, that then had to have parents somehow miraculously be teachers, um, I'm glad there was moms, uh, because if it was up to us dads, they'd just be playing in the dirt all day, I think. I'm pretty sure of it. So uh, we're going to wrap that up this week. I'm excited about that. Um, hopefully this is, uh, there's some fruit in this. Um, I'm excited about Are you excited to be here? She is not excited. Don't let her lie to you. She is nervous right now. Um, if you have not met my wife, Lindsay is, uh, she's a warrior, and she is usually upstairs with your children. Uh, on Sunday morning, and so we drug her out of here, out of there, and sent her parents up there, so pray for them, um, but they'll be all right. So I want to pray for us, and then uh, we're going to jump into this. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the moms. I thank you for the warriors. Father, help us to see and to be open and our hearts to be uh, just filled today. With, with something that, that we can walk from here that, that when we worry and, and we, we stress about the anxieties and things in life that are going on that we just don't know, we can't control, we, we just don't know the outcome of it. Father, I just, I just ask that today you, you give us something that fills our heart, that from just this little bit of time that we get to spend to share your, your word, your gospel, the, the teachings that you have for us, that we can, we can become warriors. And not only in our own personal lives, but warriors for you. And so as we go through this short time we have this morning to just celebrate what you're doing in the lives of our moms and to celebrate what you're doing in the lives of this church, we just ask that you lead us, guide us, give us wisdom, and just bless this time that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so a couple weeks ago, uh, we were talking about from fear to faith. And it's like, what is this, uh, the spirit of faith? We talked about how Peter, he had asked Jesus, he says, hey, Jesus, if that's you, remember we were talking about this if things, we run across this all the time, we get hung up on the ifs. Well, I don't know, what if, or, or what if, and we have these fears of these things that we, that we kind of hold in, and we're talking about how moving from fear to faith, that fear is either a lack of faith or having a faith that wasn't strong or sustainable. Remember talking about that? And so today we're like, what's the difference between fear and worry? Because you think about that, like, well, I, I fear snakes. I deathly hate snakes. If I see a snake, I will throw up. So if you're with me and we see a snake, just expect I'm going to throw up on your shoes. That's just going to happen. I don't know where that came from. Uh, I'm sure it came from my mom because she's the same way. Um, and I don't know if any of my boys are that way or not. No, they are not. They will go pick those things up. In fact, one of the ways I tried to get... What's that? We had a pet snake at one time. Yes. The best way to get over a fear is to bring that fear into the house. <laughs> Genius idea. They would have this little tiny snake. I thought, you know what? I'm going to get over this. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to, you know, pet the, you pet a snake? What do you do with a snake? You, yeah, you basically pet a snake. No, it didn't help. It did not help. I was, uh, I think I ended up secretly chopping its head off. I don't know what it is. But anyway, there was this fear I had. And it's like, so what's the difference between fear and worry? And so we looked it up and we were going through this. And this is really interesting because... A fear, you have a fear of a circumstance or a situation that comes along that's unavoidable. You ever thought about it? It's a circumstance or a situation that you're in that is completely unavoidable, and you have this natural feeling of this fear. But worry, worry is a mindset or a feeling that is avoidable. You ever thought about that? That's avoidable. Worry is actually avoidable. Fear focuses on the here and now. It's a response to something real. Worry focuses on something unknown in the future, and it's an emotional response to a negative event. 
That's a lot of words, but what it's saying is, is you can have a fear of something that's uncontrollable. Snakes coming out of the grass, I have no control over that. But the reaction I have, that that's a negative thing put into my mind, that's a worry, right? Fear is, un, is we come across fear, it'll happen, but worry we can control. And so we see this fear not, fear not. There's all these scriptures, 365, I think, fear not in the Bible, one for every day. That's just happenstance, right? But worries, we can, but we still hang on to these worries because life uh, just gets consumed, these thoughts, these negative thoughts. Um, I remember, I don't even remember if it was last year or two years ago, when I was in uh, Hutch over there working with youth at Cross Point. Um, one night we had youth. Jenny, I know you, you were there because you were helping me, so it must have been last year, right? So we, we had youth. Uh, Ethan, I think, was working. I think Zeke was there with some of his buddies. Um, the boys, Lindsay was there doing something on a Wednesday night, ends up taking Maverick home with her. We only live like five houses down from the church. And so it's a busy night. We have games. We have uh, just everything going on. We get cleaned up. I'm done for the night. I go home. I sit down. The boys are off doing their thing. They're home playing. And I just remember just sitting on the couch. And it was just a long night. And I just remember going, oh, it feels good just to sit. And I felt like an hour went by. You thought it was more like 30 minutes. And Lindsay says, you know, it's time for the boys to go to bed. She goes, man, Levi's been really quiet. Yeah, he must have put himself down. I go, yeah, I haven't even seen him <laughs> since I got home. And she jokingly she says, oh, you did bring him home from the church, right? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, did I? I had him? She goes, but yeah, you took him. I left him there, brought Maverick home. Remember, he was in the kids' church. Uh, I'll be right back. I jumped in my truck. I drove, you know, I could have jogged over the church quicker than driving over, but I drove over. I pulled up front, like right in front, like I was going in to save all the women and children from a burning building. Like I was shot in there and I got in the front door and I'm, and I'm thinking in my mind, oh my goodness, what if he's there all alone? What if the lights are out? So we shut it off. And it's like, I, I'm worried. And I'm, I'm getting all worked up and this anxious. I walk in and there's Miss Nerma just standing there holding his hand right in the foyer, just smiling. And I walk out I'm like, I'm so sorry. I just, I don't know. I completely forgot. God, I just, da, 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 da. I'm like, I went home, and I'm making all these excuses. She goes, what, what? She goes, stop, stop, stop. She goes, why are you worried? She goes, what are you worried about? And I go, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. She goes, no, no, she goes, we got this. She's like, I know where you live. I have your phone number. I, and she's like 183 years old. Like, she's like, I've had kids. I've had grandkids. Like, we're good. Don't worry. And, and it was like, I just realized that she wasn't worried because she was a warrior. Like, this woman had been through this before. This was not the first time. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is not the first time somebody left their kid at church, right? <laughs> Has anybody ever left their kid at church? Okay, Maria's fessing up to it, but I think there's one. Oh, Sam. Yeah. All right, so I'm not the only one. I mean, I had no excuse other than I just was not focused, and I was worried. And Miss Nerma, oh, bless her heart. She was just a sweetheart. And so I was like, I was worried. But that was that thing. Was like, I was thinking of all these things. My imagination was going and, and what was going on. Well, the poor child is there starving to death. You know, all these things. And she's like, no, we're good. We're good. And so I was, didn't know why she wasn't freaking out when I misplaced my kid. I didn't abandon him. I just misplaced him. All right? Remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago. So it's this dwelling on the problems. These worries are often overcome because we dwell on these problems. We dwell on, oh, we just don't know what's going on. But these warriors, this is this. It says, Warriors are often overcome by constantly dwelling on the problems, but warriors focus on solutions. Isn't that cool? Like warriors, you're always thinking about the situation. You're all, oh, what are we going to do? But warriors, they're looking for the solutions. How are we going to deal with this? And Miss Nerva, she goes, oh, we got a solution. We'll call him. I, only, I live around the block too. I'll drop him off on the way home. She already had solutions put in place. She wasn't worried. If there were, you know, that's, there are cameras recording. I'm sure glad nobody went back and watched that. That would have been really embarrassing. But what I want to look at today um, is a scripture that we're all com that that we probably all some of us probably have this memorized it's from Philippians four. And this is a common verse. A lot of us Philippians uh, four six and seven we probably know it. We have it memorized. But a lot of times we stop at six and seven and don't read eight and nine. And so today I want to read six, seven, eight, nine. And Scott's back there going, "Wow, only four verses today. Interesting." But I, I, uh, I want to give Lindsay an opportunity here too. So I'm only going to do four verses. And um, I didn't bring my reading glasses up, so I will read it from the screen. Okay. Stop making fun of me, son. All right, here we go. Philippians four, six through nine. This is what it says: Don't worry about anything. That's what Miss Nervous said. 
right? Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds and you live your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And here we go. This is where we got to keep going. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. So we, 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 we hit those first two verses and, and we think, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious. Just pray about it and stuff. And then it says, okay, cool. I can pray. I'll do that. But, but what am I praying about? What am I praying for? What am, I, what am I doing? And a lot of times I think we get confused on how we pray. Like it says to put it into practice. And one of the things I look about and I saw this, I love this. It says prayer isn't to keep God informed. It's to keep God involved. You think about that with your kids. Is you, you don't want your kids just to inform you of what they're doing. right? You want them involved. You want to be involved in their life. You want to be speaking into them. You want to know what they're going through so that you can go through that with them, so that you can guide them and lead them. Don't just keep me informed. Just don't tell me what you're doing. We've had to deal with this with Zeke a little bit now. That he's driving. I go and look at the thing and see where he's at. He goes, oh, yeah, I went to this place or that place. And I go, no, I need to know what you're doing, where you're going, who you're with, like a helicopter parent, right? That's my job. i got to know everything. And so it doesn't just stop with prayer. If we're going to move from a warrior to a warrior, we've got to have a battle plan, right? And that's what those whole two verse, second verses about, these, this moving from a warrior to a warrior. Fix your thoughts. This is this one. We've got to fix our thoughts. On what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and worthy of praise. And we're going to need some weapons and some armor. Oh, man. Isn't it awesome to have armor? Can you imagine? Um, Jenny, you put a thing on Facebook this morning. It was an orange in two glasses. One had the, uh, what's it called? Peel. The peel. peel. It's a weird word. Like, the peel is a burger. Know. Okay, anyway. You, uh, it had the peel on it and it floated. Right? But it didn't have the peel on it. It didn't have its outside armor. It sunk. And so it was a great, uh, it's talking about that Ephesians, it's talking about putting on the armor of God and all that. We have to put it into practice. So one of the things I want to do is bring one of the, uh, one of the most prayer warriors, one of the best uh, warriors in life when it comes to just putting this into practice and doing this thing. I wanted Lindsay to share a little bit this morning. Um, I don't even know what you're going to share about. I know you told me, but I forgot. No, I'm joking. I, I yeah, still do that. I was listening. So I wanted her to share a little bit, and then um, I'm going to wrap this up at the end here. And okay. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So when we were kind of talking about Mother's Day, we were like, "Oh, let's do something together and bless the moms." And he's like, "What do you think we should talk about?" And, you know, I was praying about it, and I'm going, "Well, most moms and probably dads too struggle with worry." I mean, that's just something we all, I don't think I've ever met a mom that doesn't worry about her kids. And so um, it's just constantly these thoughts and these things in our heads, and God calls us not to worry. And so I'm like, okay, biblically, what if we break down what that looks like? Um, so that's kind of what we what we talked about. And so in that verse in Philippians, uh, Ryan was reading that, uh, what are you thinking on? And so we talked about, okay, well, we could think you know, hit on the armor of God, which I don't know, maybe we can do that another time. But um, one of my very, very, very favorite um, pictures that's gone on social media recently is this. I think Scott probably has it, maybe. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot no. to oh, yeah. highlight it all. There it is. Again. Okay. I don't know if you guys have seen this going around social media. It says, this is like my favorite picture, probably because she has silver hair, like, and I'm going for that, but whatever. Um, get ready for battle. Gear up. Wield your weapons. Face your enemy. And what? Yeah. So this is where we fight our battles. Okay. Um, our battles, this is something that's really interesting because our battles, um, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, right? It's against the principalities and powers of darkness. And so... The only weapon that Satan really has against us is he's a liar and he's a deceiver. That's all he has. 
Um, so our job to really protect against that is to renew our minds and protect our thoughts. And so worry happens where? In your mind, right? It's your thought process. It's what you're thinking on, what you're dwelling on. So in that uh, scripture that he read, he, you know, he says, okay, meditate on these things, think on these things. So, okay, what does the word meditate mean, right? I was looking into all this. Okay, so in like our regular English language, it's to, oh, I wrote it down so that I wouldn't forget. Um, hang on, i got to make sure I have it. Maybe it's on page two. Oh, there it is. Okay, it says to reckon or count or to compute. Um, and then I was kind of looking biblically in uh, what the word meditation means. And in Hebrew, it means to mutter. It means to, like, talk aloud, say things out loud, right? And so I'm like, that is so interesting. So... A lot of times, like, when we think of, like, meditation, we think, like, yoga, or, like, mm, you know, and, like, empty your mind and all these things. And it's, like, that's not biblical meditation. Meditation is you take the truth of the word of the Lord and you are meditating on it. You're constantly thinking about it, um, teaching it to our kids, um, memorizing it, putting it in our mind, and that's what we're thinking about. And so the opposite of worry, because worry is basically... Um, Satan's counterfeit of meditation, right? The Lord gives us meditation as this beautiful gift that we can dwell on his word and put it in our hearts. And the enemy's counterfeit is worry. So we're all meditating on something. We're all constantly thinking about something. So it's a matter of how do I take my worries and my thoughts and my concerns um, and, and biblically handle those to where I turn it into meditating on his word. So that's what we're kind of going to get into um, real quick because this is one thing I wrote down is you can't be both a, a worrying woman or man and a warring woman or man. You can't you can't do both. Okay. So you got today we got to decide what we're going to be. So what do we do with those thoughts? So of course in preparation we put on the armor of God. You know we can study that later. But um, if we're all meditating on something. And Satan knows that that's kind of where he can attack is in our thoughts. How do we take these thoughts that he puts in, these lies of like the cares of this world and the concerns and the anxieties, which are real. They're legit. They actually happen. You know, sometimes, sometimes though, they don't. And worry is literally, you can sit there in your house, completely protected from life, and bury yourself under covers and continually be like, I'm not going to go out of the house because this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. That's worry, right? It's not like it's right in front of you. That's more like here what Brian was talking about. Um, okay, so to combat this, we need to um, start applying God's truth into our lives, right? So Satan has the lies coming in in order to protect our mind. We need to um, fill our minds with truth. So uh, in John 8, 32, you guys will know this verse probably memorized by every single one of you here. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall... There you go. Very good. Okay, so perfect. Everybody knows it, but what we don't read is the verse before. Well, maybe we read it, but we don't usually include it together. It says that Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word and you are my disciples indeed, then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the word, this here, is truth. So when the enemy um, is trying to get you to believe certain things about yourself or about people in your family, like he's not good enough, why don't you leave him, um, you know, kick your kids out or <laughs> whatever. No, that's just me. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> it's a joke. That's a joke. Okay, so... Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to compare what the enemy is trying to tell you with what the word of God is because the word of God is truth, right? Um, so we need to learn to abide in the word. So, uh, so let's say practically how, how this is going to look. So remember the word mutter is meditate. So we're going to um, start speaking truth into our lives. So, you know, you can say to me, okay, but let's see, I pray, right? So that first verse that Ryan read or the first two verses, it said pray, right? And then the next two verses talked about thinking on. Okay, so if I go to, because you can say, okay, well, Lindsay, yeah, I pray. I have a lot of the concerns and I pray. But there is a very big difference between a worried prayer and a prayer filled with faith. 
And so, okay, how do we change our worried prayers? I mean, God always wants us to come before him, no matter what. But there's a system that he puts in place to where we can take these concerns, and rather than just praying these worried prayers that really aren't going anywhere, and they're really not faith-filled, and we don't actually aren't expecting and don't believe he's actually going to do something, we then apply scripture to our prayers, right? So it's very important not just to... Yes, you can pray anywhere God wants us to pray, whenever. But one thing that I've learned is there's so much more power in prayer when we apply the word, right? Not I, God, not just my own words. Like, yes, he wants us to commune with him, but there's something powerful when you add his word to your prayer time, okay? So I'm just going to go over just a couple um, applications. Um, it's very, very important to uh, as you're praying, you have the word of God open because that's where truth is. Otherwise, guess who can still come in and tell you the lie, even when you're in prayer? The enemy. And guess what? He will um, come in at you and he will lie and he will lie and he will lie. And so you need to know truth to combat those lies. So um, there's one quote by Charles Spurgeon. He said, one person had come up to him and said, well, what's more important, reading my Bible or praying? And he, his response was, well, what's more important, breathing in or breathing out? It's like, okay. Because the two go hand in hand together, right? And so when you do pray, um, it's important to know the word, right? So I'm not just praying my own words. I'm praying his word, which um, he delights to hear that. So, okay, what does that actually look like? Because this word, the reason it's important is it is not just a regular book. It's not just like dead trees put together. Like It's living and active, right? It's an actual sword so we can combat the enemy. That's what Jesus did, right, in, in the wilderness. When the enemy came, when the devil came at him, he used scripture, right? So I'm just doing what Jesus does, right? So when the enemy comes at you, you need to know the word, okay? So um, what, how does that actually look? Okay, so what we're going to do is I would suggest, this is where I kind of started. Um, I will take out a journal, and I will start taking, pulling scripture and saying, um, okay, what do I struggle with? Do I struggle with this? And then write certain things down. Um, we need to speak the word out loud. We need to memorize it and we need to apply it and believe it. And then once we're constantly, remember the word mutter, I'm going to mutter it. Like, Jesus, you are good. You are only good. You're always good. And when I start to mutter, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And when it doesn't seem like in life circumstantially, like, okay, oh, God's letting me down in my circumstances, but the truth, I compare it with the truth of God. Where, no, he will never let me down. He is always faithful. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And so I take those scriptures and that, that I've learned and I apply it and I say, no, this is truth. This is a lie, right? And that's how you can compare the two. So um, uh, this is called spiritual warfare. This is why it's important up in kids' area, we memorize scripture. Right? We send them home learning scripture because that's truth. In a world where there's like tons of deception out there, we want them to know truth. It's very important. Um, and, and, you know, the, the word is living and active. It's a sword, um, like an offensive weapon to our enemy. And it's also like a scalpel. I've heard it put that way, like to our hearts, right? Like, ouch, I, I have a hardened heart or I'm struggling with this. And the Holy Spirit will just chip away like a scalpel having surgery on your heart. And it can hurt sometimes, but it's important. Okay, so what do we worry about? This is what I would suggest to do is write things down, um, maybe with a journal or whatever. Okay, are you worried that God doesn't love you anymore? Romans 8.30, nothing can separate me from the love of God. And this is what I, you know, I will go around the house just speaking it, right? Of course, if you can meditate on think about it, but remember, mutter right? Start speaking it. Um, does he still love me? Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Fear. 2 Timothy 1, seven. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Finances. Philippians 4.19. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Worry. Isaiah 26.3. God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Uh, loneliness, Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you or forsake you. So I would, su I would suggest just sitting, if you struggle with a worry, um, and you have specific things like my kids, my finances, my health, my this, 
and start looking up, man, like Google is your best friend, right? Like start looking up scripture, writing them down, journaling them, memorizing them. That way you're prepared, right? Because when you go to war, you don't just go to war. Like they, they prepare themselves. And so that's how you prepare yourself. So that's one way. Um, I know Ryan's, we're funny because we like teach really differently. And he's like, babe, you're a teacher and I, I'm a preacher. So you need to like put in something personal in there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So we were talking about worry in itself. And I said, okay, well, I know that naturally I'm not inclined to worry much. Um, but I think that it's because I grew up, like I went to a little private Christian school where we memorized like tons of scripture. And so I think because that's just been a part of my life, I'm just naturally not a worrier. Um, and so, you know, Ryan, would, I remember him going away to Africa with a group of guys and a couple, you know, the other wives would be just like freaking out. And I do love you, I swear. I would really be really sad. Well, man, oh. you love me. Okay. Um, I would be really sad, right? But I just, they're like, oh, well, aren't you concerned about this or aren't you worried about that? Or, and I'm like, no, he's good. The Lord's got him, you know? And so people will struggle with different things. Right, so what what concerns me might not concern like for me, I was worried to get up here today. I don't actually like speaking in front of you guys, um, but I feel like the Lord was telling me to. So, so that was just something like we all have different things. So, like for me last night, okay, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given me, and you mutter it until you literally start speaking that to your soul. And you know what will happen. This is actually something um, psychologically that will happen is when you start speaking it, um, your brain patterns, the pathways, the neurological pathways in your brain when you start speaking positively um, will shift. And naturally you will become less and less of a warrior. This is the thing, it's a process, okay? It's not gonna happen overnight. But when you put this into practice, um, that will become something that worry will become less and less and less because it is something that we tend to struggle with a lot. Um, one thing, you know, just in general, when I just go and have my quiet time, this is just a habit that I've done, is I will open up a song, because this helps with just your quiet time too, because how many of you know that, okay, read my Bible, pray every day, like it can get really old, like what do I do about that? So um, uh, I've learned on top of just having those scriptures that I've memorized in, um, in my day-to-day -day living, when I just sit down and have my quiet time, I pray the Psalms because it really does give verbiage, biblical verbiage to what you're going through. So if you can sit and you go through your prayer requests or all the things and you're like, okay, it's been two minutes. Not that it matters, honestly. But if you really long to spend um, a little bit more time with the Lord in your quiet time, so, so this will sustain you is to pray and to read. So you can literally open up the Psalm. This is just a habit that I've done. Um, I don't know, I can pick whatever. So I'll pick a, a song that everybody knows. That way it's a little bit easier. You all know probably Psalm 23. So this is how we would pray and mutter together and mix the two of the reading and praying. Is that okay? Am I good? If I go through, I won't go through the whole song. Just a quick thing. It says, this is just an example. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So to mutter and to stop and to meditate, you, you would just stop and just pray. God, you are my good shepherd. God, I thank you that I don't want. God, you are so good to me. I think I trust your leadership. And then you would just pray with that verbiage until you kind of come to that. And then you move on to the next verse. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. God, I thank you that uh, you make me lie down. When I'm too busy to, to stop, you force me to lie down. And you, you lead me to still waters. God, that... Where I go, where you lead me, there's no chaos, God, that there's only peace. And so this is how you you kind of take God's word. You can still apply, like, so say you have a concern or a worry, like, um, he restores my soul. God, you know my soul is disheartened right now because of my health. God, I know that you will restore my soul. God, I know that you are always faithful. God, even in this time where I don't see it, God, I know I can trust you to restore my soul. And so you take God's word and you apply it in your prayers. Does that make sense? Um, and so this will help you have very um, sustainable prayers as you can lift up your concerns and your worries because they're going to come. And so it's a matter of what am I thinking on? What am I thinking on? Am I meditating on truth over the lies of the enemy? Because as um, moms, 
I think that, and probably anybody, that is um, one of our biggest things is we, we're planners is what my mom likes to say. I'm just a planner, I'm just thinking ahead. <laughs> and I said, no, it's good to plan, that's fine. Like all that, all that's good. It's when worry consumes your life, right? You can think on those things and then what do you do with that thing that comes in um, and that thought and that concern is, do I just dwell on it? What's the worst thing that could happen? Oh my goodness, I can't leave my house because the snake's gonna get me every time I go to the lake or every time, like, it'll, it'll um, paralyze you is what worry can do. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I know that there is medical conditions and like think people that struggle with stuff and go see a doctor if that's the thing, but this is something that we all can struggle with and need um, the word of, and truth to um, help us pull through out of worry. And, and to turn us into a, war, a warrior because we are in a battle and I think one of the enemy's lies is Oh, you're good. You're not even in battle. And it's this weird, because the end um, goal, really, in that whole verse in, that you read in Philippians is peace. Mm -hmm. So it's like, in order to get to the peace, if there's an enemy attacking me and my kids, you better bet your butt I'm going to go to work and stuff in order to bring peace again in my home. You know what I mean? So in order to get peace, we have to go to war and realize that we're, we are in a war, and we got to be prepared. So that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, so... Um... One of the things I take away from that, whenever Lindsay is up here, you're going to have homework. I can just tell you that. There's going to be homework, something to do, right? Uh, she's a, a good teacher like that. One of the things uh, that as we were looking at this and looking at a warrior versus a warrior is warriors are very passive. That we're in bed, a warrior is active. Right, A warrior is not going to just sit back and wait. They're not going to just sit back and see what happens. A warrior is actually going to get to work. They're going to go to battle. They're going to, they're going to follow a plan. And that's exactly what she's talking about here is that if we're going to be warriors and we're going to defend being a Christian and defend who Jesus is and we're going to be like those disciples in Acts that we've been teaching on that just went to jail time after time after time. They kept getting arrested because they were not giving up and sitting back and just letting the world go. They were stepping out in faith with the Holy Spirit filling them up. And if we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have the power and, the, and we have the, the ability to do those things. We have abilities to do so much, but we have to have a battle plan. We have to get to work. We have to be active in doing that. Um, an interesting thing talking about that peace, living in peace, is that warriors, they live without peace. You ever thought about that? Like if you're worrying all the time, you just don't feel like you've ever had this peace in your life, but warriors, they live in peace knowing that the battle's already won. Isn't that, isn't that good? It's like the battle's already won. Like It's like we're going to have these fights, we're going to come up against these things, but Jesus won. Like we win in the end. And so she uh, read that from Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And it's that perfect peace of keeping your thoughts fixed on Jesus. And so it, it just like that, how you do that in prayer and stuff. And you may have heard me uh, mention this before. I've shared this with you before. It's, um, we talk about practicing our revving or RPMs. You know, in a car that has a tachometer, when you rev it up, that revving your RPMs. And the RPMs that, that I've been taught is reading, praying, meeting, and sharing. And so you read your Bible. You're in your Bible. You're praying continually. You're in prayer. You're meeting with other believers. You're sharing what's going on. And the share part of it or serve is... Oh my goodness, you guys get ever get tired of me saying, share your testimony, share your testimony, share your testimony. Um, we had a really interesting um, last week because of an article that was written. I don't know if everybody saw that. <clears throat> um, but there was a very, very nice article written about First Christian Church and the revival that's happening and the growth that's happening and all the amazing things. I always get nervous when those things come out like that. Because I'm like, do they get it? You know, is, is the guy that was sitting over here taking pictures and just kind of talking to people, does he get the big picture? I mean, because, I, you know, there's so much that goes on more here in this community with this body than just, you know, for an hour to an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. Is he really going to get it? And after reading that article, I don't think he got it from just being here. I think he got it. Because the Holy Spirit was speaking in this place, and through your testimonies of what's going on in this place, he got it, right? That was an amazing article. There were things in that article, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, man, that's great. And, you know, the half of it was all faith, but, you know, oh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yes. No. no? Oh, she's... Hated that. 
you hated that. But it was really good. There was some good stuff in there because people were they were sharing what's going on in the life of this church. It's not about what I'm doing or what any individual is doing or, or anything like that. It's just the body. It's the life. It's this active body of going to war day after day after day day in this community. And so that's that's what it is just it's a joy to be uh, through that. And that's uh, one of the reasons we wanted to encourage you with that. Uh, moving from a warrior to a warrior is active. Is putting it to work, and that's how we're going to move from a warrior to a warrior. Thank you, moms, for being warriors. Um, I know our kids would have been in trouble if Lindsay wouldn't have stepped up and uh, really kind of stepped in with them when school is out. And I know that's uh, been from a lot of households. Um, so, again, thank you. Um, we've got some work to do, don't we? Y'all have homework now. Right? We're going to start praying and, and really digging in, get in the Word, and that's, uh, that's what I want to do that. I want to pray for us. Um, before I pray for us, I just want to remind the moms, like a, you know, announcements 2.0 here, don't forget to grab a, uh, a rose afterwards. We want to bless you with that, and then if you want pictures, that's upstairs. Um, after I pray, we're going to stand and worship, and um, this song uh, will be on the screens again. I, I really want us to just... I really want us to just yell this out as we're singing. It's uh, Raise a Hallelujah with Surrounded. This is how I fight my battles. It's a really neat song. I, I hadn't heard it before. Uh, Lindsay came across this. It was awesome. So I want to I wanna pray, and then I just want us to stand, and I want us to just worship this, if we can do that. All right, Father, thank you. Father, thank you that uh, you give us scripture that shows us that being active and being a warrior is what you've actually called us to be. You haven't called us to be passive and to sit back and worry and have fears and have these anxieties, these things that we can't control, but to step out in faith, to trust you, to put our faith in you and to put our, our trust in you in a way that, that we know the battle's been won. That the battles are going the fights are going to come, the, the, the deception is going to come, the things that the enemy is going to throw at us, and they're going to come. We know they're going to come. They're going to come in our marriages. They're going to come in raising children. They're going to come in our ministry. They're going to come in our jobs. They're going to come in, our, in, other, in other ways, in our schools. And Father, we just ask that, that, especially this week, as we're going through graduations and, and we have uh, family vacations coming up and we have just this time of of coming together, and that our community is coming together with just memorial and things like that. Father, I just ask that those deceptions and those lies and those distractions are pushed aside, and that your word is at the tip of our tongue, that, that we can go to battle, and we can be warriors because of what you've done already. We thank you, and we ask in your, your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen.